Hello, I'm James from Fine Music, and in this how-to video, I'll be taking you through a few simple ways you can create a click track or backing track in Audacity for your ensemble. Audacity is a free digital audio workstation available on any computer. Before starting, you'll need to have a piece selected, and for anyone doing this for the first time, I'd suggest picking something super simple. For this video, I'll be using Adam Arnold's March of the Diggers. So to start off, we need to comb through the score, marking down any important expression markings and rehearsal marks, taking note of their bar positions. We also need to get a total bar count, so it's a good idea to keep a tally of this somehow. You'll need to refer to this later. Take care to include repeated sections when you're counting. Okay, so now we have all the important info down. Start a new Audacity session. Navigate up to the Generate option, then click Rhythm Track. The Rhythm Track window will appear. All you need to do here is plug in your tempo, beats per bar, and how many beats it should run for. So for me, that will be 72 bars. However, as I'm adding two bars at the beginning for a count in, I'll need to make this 74 bars. If your piece has time signature changes, I'd recommend adding them into the session separately. For example, if you have 24 bars of 4-4 uh, four, four at 100 BPM, then 24 bars of 3-4 at 120 BPM, you would first add the 4-4 four, four section as shown. Then, using the selection tool, place the playhead in the correct position in front of the 4-4 four, four section, like so. Go back to the Generate Rhythm Track option and correct the window settings for the new section. If they don't match up correctly, you can use the Time Shift tool to adjust it. When the Rhythm Track is in, I'll add the next track. Navigate up to the Tracks menu, then under Add New, click Time Track. We'll use this to place any tempo changes during the piece. Next, go back to the track option and add a new label track. The reason we add this track is to help keep track of each section in the piece. This will help us later when we're placing audio cues and tempo changes. So, now we add each section. Make sure the label track is selected then navigate to the Tools menu and click the Selection tool. Make the selection in the track, so we can start with the Count In and Intro. Then navigate to the Edit menu and under Labels, click Add Label at Selection. You can also press Ctrl B. Now label them all as you wish. Now we can easily identify each section of the piece. We can add the voiceover to place the count in and any other cues you want to add now. Go back to track, then under add new, select stereo track. With a pair of headphones connected, you can now hit the record button here or press R and record a count in. Before you do, make sure the playhead is at the correct position. Once you have that recorded, zoom in a little using the magnifying glass tool here, or by holding the control key and using the mouse wheel. This is so we can clearly see where each beat falls. Now we can simply move the recording using the time shift tool until it lines up nicely with the rhythm track and adjusts until it sounds right. Placing other cues during the click track is as simple as finding the correct place in the track. Placing the playhead in the correct position using the select tool and then recording each cue. What we have so far sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Now, for tempo changes, all we need to do is find the right place in the track. Click along the tempo line to add points, then drag the line to change the tempo. You can have a play with it here until you find something that works. Once you're happy, all that's left is to export an MP3 file from this session to send it out to your students. So, navigate up to the file option, then export and select MP3. 
name the file and select the destination. Click OK, OK again, and wait. Once we have our MP3 file, we can also supplement the click track by creating a backing track for students to practice with. Recordings of published pieces can usually be found for download on publishers' websites. Bolger Music and the American Hal Leonard site, to name a few. But the Victorian School Music Festival site also has linked sound files available for download on all currently listed works. Once you have your recording downloaded, same as before we will create a new session in Audacity. Then drag in the audio you just downloaded and zoom in so you can see the beats easily. We can now add a rhythm track, then match the tempo and beats. We only need a few bars here for the counting, but I'll add three so it's easy to line up on that third bar. Now we can line up the recording with the last measure of that rhythm track, using the time shift tool and adjust until you're happy. Then we simply add a stereo track just as we did before and record the counting, lining it up with the time shift tool of course. Use the same method as before if you wish to add any other cues. And this is what we're left with. One, two, three, four. Now we can just create the MP3 file just as we did before and export it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this video, please contact me via my email address, james at finemusiconline.com.au.